decades, women have fought tooth and manicured nail for equality and independence. But where has it left our men? That's well a hard question. More than ever, 21st century men are struggling to find their identity. I don't know who wears the trousers anymore. So many of them lack confidence and they still live at home. And when it comes to women, they are clueless. I don't think I'll ever figure out what women want. I'm taking 10 hapless, hopeless blokes and I'm going to transform them into eligible, dateable, capable men. And by the end of it, find the hero inside all of them. Over one week, each guy is going to have to leave behind their sad lives. I have no clue what's going to happen. And face their greatest fears. I feel absolutely destroyed already. I've got no freaking clue. Confront their inner demons. I'd like to be more trusting! Ooh. And learn a few things about the opposite sex. It's the most physical contact I've had with a woman in a long time. Help is at hand. This is shocking. Just let out the rage. Release that emotion. It's not going to be easy. Right. I've got to get through this. I'll agree to disagree, then. No, no. It's time to man up. This is Mummy's boy, Mike. He's 30, single, and lives like a teenager. This is my room, my abode, uh, my mess. Yeah, is this organised? I'm this organised. I'm just awful at throwing things out. This is my beer collection here, beer glasses. I collect quite a few things. I've got a whiskey collection. I seem to have a puppy dog collection. Let's have fun with puppy at the park. Ah! Mike still lives with his mum, Jonthia, who dotes on her son and takes her role a little too seriously. My mum does a lot for me, she does. My mum uh, buys me plenty of clothes on the internet. She'll drive me to work, she'll do a lot of cooking for me. You know, it's easy at home. I don't need to do stuff, and then someone else just picks it up. I think Mike is way too comfortable at home. He, if I'm being brutally honest, he's waited on by mum a lot. It's just easy, he has things on a plate. So you finished eating, darling, I'll put this away then. Yeah. It's a bit of a dichotomy with Mike, because, you know, you want him to be independent, go out and do his thing, but also he is in a bit of a dream world sometimes. I sort of um, watch out for him, in a sense. He needs looking after, I suppose. Although her son's reached the ripe old age of 30, Jonty is still doing the school run. I do drive Mike around, because he hasn't learned to drive yet. Mike's a real-life Peter Pan, who works as an after-school play worker. It's tough being a grown-up when there's fun to be had. It's a bit scary when you get, like, adults coming up to you. They're, like, in their 20s, and they're like, oh, yeah, I used to... you're Mike, aren't you? I remember you when I was at playgroup. And it's like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Mike's just one big kid himself, really. Sometimes I have to remind him that um, jobs need doing, because he likes to play and gets very involved with his play. Do you want to make a paper aeroplane? He would like to be a dad. So, I mean, that from following on from that, you've got to have a wife or, wouldn't you, really? It's like I'm a trained father and I haven't got any children. When it comes to love, Mike hasn't exactly been reeling them in. I am a virgin. Um, I think, though, that, that sounds bad, I'm sure, to some people it does. But if I get married, I really want to honour my wife to be. Um, you know, whoever she is, I want to say that this is my gift to you, my purity, my heart, you know. Have I ever had a girlfriend? No. You know what? I really, really want to be someone's chocolate. I really want to be that, like... Like, they'll wake up in the morning and say, you know, I want a, a chunk of Mikey with my coffee in the morning, you know? I want to be, you know, that kind of that, kind of that love. Mike's lost all sense of responsibility and self-confidence, but he's hungry for change. I do feel a little bit left on myself. I feel like I'm kind of missing out. To get Mike's life on track, I'm bringing him to the Man Up flat in London, where he will embark on an intensive five-step programme of reinvention. Thank you, Thanks, Mum. Over five days, Mike will be stripped 
bear emotionally, physically and psychologically in a bid to get him to man up and learn to stand on his own two feet. Wow. <laughs> it's a nice place. Being without his mum is a big step for Mike as he comes to terms with being an independent man. I'm not used to being on my own, so it's quite scary in, in that sense because it's quite lonely, but it's all a bit, ooh. It's Mike's first day in the Man Up flat and the start of a potentially life-changing week. I'm on a one-woman mission to delve into the male mind. I want to find out why Mike's in such a mess and help transform him into the man he wants to be. Mike is a really sweet guy. He's lovely. But he's 30 and he's still living at home with his mum and she does everything for him. It's like he's still mummy's little boy. And what I want to find out is how, age 30, did he end up in this situation? What happened? Why do you think you're here, then? I want to change. I kind of want to move on with my life a bit. I don't know, kind of grow up a bit, I guess. But I'm not quite sure how. Well, that's what we're here to help yeah. you with. OK, so it's time to get a bit personal here, Mike. Yes. Have you ever been on a date with a lady? Not really. I've never got the grasp of that whole scene or how it works. Have you ever kissed a girl? I have once. It was a girl called Amy, and I, I basically just started dancing, and then things just got really intimate, and it was very nice, and I was very jelly. Oh. I, was, I just Your kissed legs. her. Your legs went to jelly, and then, and then what happened? Um, I kind of thought, oh, be careful. Are we going too far? So you do know how babies are made? Yes, I do. OK, so it's kissing is perfectly safe? Yes, I know. We're going to do this, OK? This is the first part of your journey. I'm already feeling a bit nervous. <laughs> we haven't even started. OK. Deep so. breath. <laughs> In with love. Out with testosterone. Go and get yourself showered. OK. I'll Thank wait you. here for you. Go on. Go and have a good scrub up. <laughs> Mike is lovely. He's really charming. He's really sensitive. But he's lost. And for me, he really brings out the maternal instinct. I feel like I want to look after him. Not the primal instinct of, you're a man, you could take control and look after me. He just is a mummy's boy, and the problem with mummy's boys is they're not sexy. Are you ready? Yeah. Got your mum purse? Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. Should we do this? Yeah, let's go. Come on then, love. The time has come for Mike to man up. He has no idea what lies ahead. Are you freaking out? Yeah, 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 to be fair, yeah. Are you feeling like this is all a bit too much? You're just thinking, oh, God, I want to go home. Yeah, there is that temptation just to kind of just make a, do a runner. I know you're anxious and I I'm, I'm, can hear all these thoughts. Just zip it. Yeah. Stand strong. Yeah. Be a man. And let's do this. Yeah. To start his five-step programme, I'm about to plunge Mike into an alien world that he knows nothing about. Women. Ready? <laughs> And where better to give Mike a rude awakening from his virginal sanctuary than a sexy salsa class? Mike's about to come face to face with a gaggle of salsa dancing senoritas. Will our wannabe Lothario be able to take the lead, or will he end up as red and ruffled as his dancing shirt? I get so self conscious about my image and my body, I think. It doesn't really help. Just feeling overexposed, I think, isn't it? It's just feeling. I feel like I can't hide anything. I'd love to look good for that much shirt on. I don't. Um, so, uh, no, I wouldn't say I was confident in my body, but then I, I, I wouldn't not take my shirt off. Um, you know, you never see magazines, you know, get unhealthy and put on weight. Every bloke out there would have a six pack if it wasn't so much hard work putting it in to get it. Because the gut looks horrible, it makes uh, clothes not fit properly, and also you'll wind up with diabetes. 
I've got a stupid tattoo, that doesn't help. If I didn't have the tattoo, I'd probably take my shirt off a bit more. Mm. I think as time moves on, you care about your physique less and less. Well, to me, my tattoo says ludicrous childhood error, but to you, it'd probably say made in England. Everyone, regardless of their gender, is uh, not always entirely happy with the way that they look. Check you out. <laughs> All right, go on then. So what do I Give do? it some welly. What welly? Go and work your charm on these lovely bunch of ladies. Hello, everybody. Hello. Um, wow. Well, um, what do I say? Uh, I'm Mike. Um, I'm from Brighton. I've never been standing in front of all these people and everyone's looking at me and thinking, what is this man and where does he come from and what does he do? Um, so I'm feeling a little bit intimidated. Have you got a girlfriend? No, I haven't. So how, so how long have you been single? Um, 30 odd years. What was the a cause? lifetime, in what other words. What was the cause of the breakup? Uh, there wasn't a breakup. I'm 30. <laughs> I think he's got, he's got something to work with there. There's a little, little, little bit of magic. I mean, he's got to stop with all of this. Oh, I'm a mess. So he needs to button up with the negative stuff. OK, guys, let's start with the class. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be fine. <laughs> um, uh, Salsa is a close body contact dance. With Mike having never been so intimate with a woman, he needs to grab this one and only opportunity. No, no, no. Oh, sorry, should we start again? Sorry. Perhaps he'll wow them with his moves. <laughs> or maybe not. Simple, yes? Simple. OK, change change Simple. Thank you. Simple. OK, just a little bit here. I just don't want to... I don't want to hurt you or lose no, no, you. Yeah, no. Mike's like a fish out of water. If he doesn't loosen up soon, he's never going to land a catch. I would like you to get closer. Uh, rem remember, it's about the passion, but sensuality. Grab her back only, her back, and bring her in. Yeah. And then we do love we done before. That's it. Oh, yo, yo. And turning. After a couple of hours on the dance floor, Mike finally begins to find his feet. I'm getting a bit jealous. I feel left out. I feel like, I don't know, what am I, chopped liver? <laughs> that was very good. Yeah? I'm impressed. Yeah, because you seem very confident now. Wow, How yeah. How shots you had? <laughs> and one, two, hand up. What did you think of our Mike? Do you fancy him? I can't say that I fancy him right now. Um, he needs a lot more confidence. I'm shy, but, um, you know... Did, did you feel shy around him? Did it make you feel uh, a bit shy? A bit shy yeah. <laughs> oh, because but... he's a confident dancer. Maybe, or...? And down, six and seven. <laughs> Guys, well done, everyone. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well done, Mike. Well done. Super, super. <laughs> I feel like you're having such good fun. Now, I've got, I've got a theory. Like, right. we've been hanging out a bit now, and I've kind of watched you and got to know you. Do you think maybe you might be a little bit of a drama queen? OK. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you do get just wrapped up in this emotional thing of, of not knowing what you're doing, and then when it happens, it's, it's great. It's like something magical just sort of... We, we, we need, to, get, we need to start harnessing those yes. emotions, because what happens is you get frightened, and then the emotions take over, yeah. and then you go, ah, and like you did there, if I'd have yeah. let you, you'd have run off and not done that. And actually, how much did you enjoy that? I've really loved it. It was really, really good. Well done. Thank you. Show me some love. <laughs>have you ever been on a date? I never got the grasp of that whole scene or how it works. I've brought Mike to London to embark on a five-step programme that will open his eyes to a more confident and independent future. Oh, sorry, can we start again? <laughs> sorry. Still living at home, Mike's never even been on a date. A lack of self-belief has been holding him back for years.
If he's ever going to man up, I need to understand the root cause. For phase two of my mission, I'm sending our mummy's boy to counselling psychologist Angela Matanda, who confronts clients with their naked self as a way to unlock their innermost feelings. Meet Mike. <laughs> Thoughts? Um, really uncomfortable, kind of looking at it, really. You look almost in pain, so I'm going to ask you to do something for me. I've got these stickers here, because I want you to put these stickers on things about this mic that you like. OK. I guess I quite like my nose. I think it's cute when I look in the mirror sometimes. Okay. Heart in many respects, because I'm very caring. So the calves, I always think they're really strong and okay. powerful. Great. Those are for bits of you that you don't like. I don't like my tummy. OK. And um, my heart, we have a big history of, of like, my dad died of a heart attack. Oh, and sorry. it's been quite a worry, like, as a health issue. OK. So um, that's not brilliant. Um, I really don't like my double chin. That's partly why I have a beard here. So, like, sort of, chest obviously doesn't look great. Um, I think mentally, I over-worry about everything. It's almost like obsessively, it really holds me back. Isn't that interesting how you've almost, not quite, cancelled out all the things that you like by all the things you don't like? As soon as you started to get a little bit positive about yourself, you withdrew. Yeah. And that sounds like it's something you do a lot. You might just tip your toe in the water and go, no, better not do that, just in case. What if, what if, what if, what if, what if? And I think you live on the what if planet. I do. Is that planet Mike? So, yeah? unfortunately. It feels to me like there's quite a lot that you'd like to talk about. Mm. And something you said earlier was about your dad dying when we looked mm. at the heart area. Could you tell me a little bit about that? Um, well, he, he, he passed away um, about five years ago, I think. Uh, you know, and he did say, you know, that he was very proud of me, which was a really nice thing to say. Yeah. Uh, but he have said, you know, when are you bringing back a girlfriend? When are you going to bring back a girlfriend? When is this going to happen? Say, he didn't say I'm disappointed with you, but I didn't know quite how to answer that question. I didn't know, um, it's just that thing of what am I doing wrong? When but your dad really died, struggled. Mike, did you have... Other things, I started dropping other things. Like I, 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 I'm just wondering... other things like this. Mike, Sorry. just take a breath, it's okay. It's OK, because when you do that, when you do that, lots and lots of talking, I feel as if that's a block. OK. No, no, it's, and, and that withdrawal felt like I'm talking to Mike, who's very, very young. Talk to me about your relationship with Mum. Uh, do you feel your mother treats you as if you're 30? I think she wants to. I don't think... But she we... doesn't? So being at home has kind of reverted you back to being about how yeah, old? Maybe 16. 16. I think one of the things, Mike, I'd really like you to do is to be really direct with someone I think is very important to you, okay. but who you've also identified is holding you back yeah. and you want to move on. Yes. And that is? Mum. Your mum. You can do it. Yeah. You can do it. You really can. Mike's chat with Angela was really insightful and we got to the bottom of why he's 30 and still living at home. And of course it's because his dad died and he had to deal with that and that's really sad. But it was a while ago and Mike's stuck. So what I've got planned for him next is going to be a short, sharp, shock to his system and hopefully help him move forward. Mike needs to learn to stand on his own two feet and I've got just the right assignment for him. What you are about to do is major. I'm kind of thinking positive, 
Just I'm be... learning not You're to learning worry. You're learning about yourself. Yes, I am. I'm learning about myself and about how to turn off that little thing that goes, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, it's kind of. In a monologue. It's in a monologue of excuses. Mike normally spends his days at home with mum or surrounded by kids at work. What he needs is an injection of testosterone, and I'm hoping this next challenge will sort out the man from the mummy's boy. Oh, down here? Yeah. All right. This is staff. Staff. Is that right? Don't shake hands. This is Mike. Hello. OK. I'm Mike. Hello. Name. Mike. Name. Surname. Cooper. Cooper. OK, hey, Cooper. Here's your kit. Thank you. Double up over there, right hand door. Go, go, move. Okay. Come on, Cooper, move. Right hand side, right hand side, go. He's got a tough job on his hands. He's a big kid. How he's going to cope with this, I don't know. He's got to turn emotional man into action man. Like that. That guy, I'm shocked by him. You know, he doesn't shake hands. He's not particularly interested in... <laughs> My name or anything about me, so that's, that says military to me. I'm leaving Private Cooper to fend for himself for 24 hours, where he'll live in SAS conditions under the supervision of Staff Sergeant Wayne, who has trained Britain's best. This challenge is designed to completely take Mike out of his comfort zone and teach him to take risks, focus on the task in hand and bond with a team of tough men. OK, give Cooper a rope. OK, Cooper, I need you to get through this without stopping. Go! Come on, Cooper, go! Go, 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 come on! Get on the left there, Cooper, on the left, on the left! Get your head down, head down! Push yourself! Get your ass down! Grab the rope! Don't be a big girl, come on! Steady yourself! Sit down on your ass and slide down! <laughs> Out the other side. Come on, get your backside out of that pit. OK, use your legs. Use your legs as an arm. Teamed with a physically fit okay, troop, Mike can't be seen to be lagging behind. And on to the wall. This is his Push chance yourself. to step up. Push yourself in the harder. Come on, Cooper. And force himself yeah. into becoming a tougher, stronger, fitter, well done, happier Cooper. man. Just hold it there. Yeah, I've got it. I think I've got it. Feet down, that's it. Right, that's it, guys. Stop there. Well done. Well done. OK, well done, guys. Good effort. And I thought we'd do some fishing today. I love fishing. Never knowingly on purpose being inside a gym. Sometimes I tend not to see my friends because I had to go to the gym. If a girl says to me, oh, I only like boats and big muscles, then you know, I'm not bothered, love. I'll find someone else. Fitness has only come into my life recently. You don't want to be like all fat and lazy, then you can't really do nothing, you can't work. I want to get proper fit, though. Like, I would like to tone up and that. But, obviously, it's hard. I think keeping fit is very important. I think, also, I think that's why I'm, I'm single, because most girls go for the hench people, like the sporty type. It's been a tough day for Mike. Emotionally and physically drained, he's at breaking point. But as they say in the army, no pain, no gain. Just feeling a bit, um, I don't know, really very far out of my comfort zone, I think, at the moment. I feel like I've been here before and it, it, um, it gets, it gets hard. I think I've got to get through this somehow. OK? Children's play worker Mike Cooper is desperate to change from mummy's boy to man about town. Have I ever had a girlfriend? No. I've taken him under my wing to boost his confidence and make him into the man he wants to be. All right, go on then. Go and work your charm on these lovely bunch of ladies. He's owned up to some home truths. I think you live on the what if planet. I do. Is that planet Mike? So. Yeah? And been stretched to his limits. <laughs> really good. Bit, uh... I don't know, really very far out of my comfort zone, I think, at the moment. Oh, 0600 hours in base camp. Having spent the night in a freezing bunker, how is our little soldier this morning? 
Cooper, room inspection. Pack your bags. Get ready in 10 minutes. Come on, move. I'm feeling a bit more upbeat about the day. Just hoping that it's going to be positive. And uh, just, it's just, it's just trying to. It's so hard. I mean, last night I was just focusing on positive things. You know, it's not easy, but you've just got to do it. After the earliest wake-up ever, it's time for breakfast. But there's no sign of fried eggs or sizzling sausages in this kitchen. Good morning. morning. Good morning. How, How are you doing? Yeah. Uh, yeah, better, better. Yeah. Uh, just, uh... What? You have a good night's sleep? Ah, what a night. <laughs> what a night. What's on the menu? Oh. We've got uh, beef stew and dumplings. At home, Mike's used to his mother's wholesome cooking. But now Private Cooper is getting a taste of real army life with a freeze-dried breakfast. But you ever get like fresh fish we get from the river or that takes too long. Okay. Takes too much time. I mean we've only got a uh, limited cooking mm. cooking ability here. An army marches on its stomach. Mike will need all the sustenance he can get for what lies ahead. Okay lads, let's have you out there. Come on. Move on out, down this way. Okay, this is the challenge, this is what you're gonna do. You've got three points to get to. Right. Various destinations on here. You're going to be doing this today. Yep. This is your job. Yeah. OK? For someone who can't drive and can barely find the way around his bedroom, Mike now has to take responsibility for the squad, directing and leading them to the rendezvous point. OK, you don't know how to use a compass or a map, do you, really? Be honest. Uh, be honest. No. Best answer is no. No. Right? <laughs> compass. Make sure. The compass is, is pointing north. Right. That's the direction arrow and the red arrow all pointing north. That's the first thing you do. All right, happy with that? Yes. Are you guys happy? Yes, sir. Don't mess up. These people don't want to be wandering around the countryside. Okay. So you're going to move fast yep. and be as accurate as you can. Right, don't get lost. Off you go. In a combat situation, accurate navigation can be the difference between life and death. It's now up to Mike to ensure the troops' safe arrival. But will the responsibility of leadership make Mike stand tall? Apparently not. This way, don't we? We need to go around this river here. We're about 45 degrees off track. We need to be walking east right now and we're walking northeast. We're not going to get to the pond if we keep going this way. With Mike having to overcome serious logistical hurdles, the troop aren't fully convinced of his leadership skills. Can he win back his comrades? I mean, I think this is the path to here. Ah, yeah, we need to go back a bit and then go up. There was a path, wasn't there, over there, going that way. So I think we'll go back that way. OK, let's go. doing a lot better than he was after that first mistake. I mean, he, he spotted it himself, luckily. We didn't go too far. Turned around, I'm very impressed. OK, guys, well done. Good effort. Thank you, Star. Good effort. I'm now going to shake your hand. Good job. Don't worry about having a buddy hand. Well done. <laughs> OK, you. come on. Yeah. Firm handshake. Yeah, that's the way. Cheers. Come here, mate. <laughs> well done, mate. He's changed a lot over the last 24 hours, definitely. Um, He's certainly more confident. I think being mixed with a bunch of guys has sort of brought his confidence out a little bit more. I'd like to say I had faith in Mike, but honestly, I didn't. He, he did surprise me, though. He did very well. Hi. Don't we get too much blood on you. Yeah, don't worry, I'm covered in blood oh. anyway. This place is filthy. <laughs> Do you feel like the testosterone is pumping and you're yeah, feeling more I don't of a feel, man? Yeah, I don't feel... I feel like we could stay out here for, you know, a couple more days and... You're getting into it now. Yeah. Feel a bit get, stronger. Yeah, you get more into that kind of independent kind of mind. Do you think that if you could try to control the panic, your life would get a bit easier? Yeah, definitely. That, that, I think that's more, that's probably the, one of the big revelations, I think, from this, actually. Well, that is incredible. That's a huge epiphany. Mm. OK, right, enough emotion. Should we yeah. get out of here? Yeah, please. Come on, Come then. On, you... 24 hours in the army has helped Mike understand the need to take control of his life. Mike and his mum, Jonthea, have clung to each other since the death of his father. Having tackled the physical obstacles, it's time for him to overcome one of his biggest hurdles, the emotional. What have you been up to this week, Mike? Well, been haven't having I good been up to this week? Yeah? 
I had a w talk with Angela, who's a psychologist. And, and she pointed out a lot of truths about, I think, this reoccurring theme of me really over worrying about everything mm. is the big mm. problem yeah. about, mm. you know, you over worry and then that disables you to do what you're thinking you about do. doing. What do you think, what's your plan? What are, you, what are you looking forward to getting on to doing? I think, I, I do think it's kind of time for me to really kind of move out. Yeah. I think we've yeah. kind of talked about this, haven't we? We have, yeah. Uh, I don't think it's good for me or you to, for me to stay. Yes long term yeah. i think that was a, there's that's a lot the, to that's the sort of the the big crunch, crunch. as it were is moving out yeah i think it's really important there is that kind of actually so it's not such a huge culture shock when i do move out yes that i'm actually cooking my own meals yeah and it's almost like we're just housemates yeah I think it's great you've done this challenge yeah. kind of thing because it is a challenge the whole thing's been a challenge yeah. so i'm really proud that you've actually Done it and you've stuck at it. Yeah. yeah? yeah. It's really great. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, Thank you it's good. Four days ago, Mike left me and he wasn't very confident and he, yeah, wasn't totally in control. And I think he's just gained that confidence and uh, he's ready to move on. I'm really proud of what he's managed to achieve this week. I love my mum and she's a beautiful woman. I am 100% Mummy's Boy. I am, without a doubt, the favourite. I am a Mummy's Boy, yeah. I've even got a um, Mummy's Boy tattoo there, just to prove that I love my mum. <laughs> even though I, I'm not a student anymore, I'm 26, but she still treats me sometimes like a child because I've been back at home for three years after uni days. I was that much of a Mummy's Boy, I would never go on a school holiday or a school trip. So I couldn't leave her side. Anything that's ever been wrong in my life, I always go to my mum first, then anyone else, to be honest. Yeah, there's a similarity between my mum and my girlfriend. I genuinely hope I don't end up with someone that's like my mum. I think I'd be... Again, I, I think I could do better. <laughs> Singleton Mike Cooper is on the last leg of his mission to man up. So, you do know how babies are made? Yes, I do. He's braved the great outdoors. This way, don't we? We need to go around this river here. Confronted his fears. I don't know, it's just a hard thing to think of. And told his mum it's time he moved out of home. I don't think it's good for me or you to, for me to stay. Yes. Long term. Mike has spent the last five days working on his confidence and dealing with his inner demons. It's now time for Mike to go from dressing like a clueless teenager to the man he wants to be. For men, style is much more than wearing the latest trends. It's about giving off the right impression, taking pride in your appearance, and most importantly, in yourself. The moment's come for Mike to go from style Siberia to awesome apparel. What is this look? What, does this, what is this about? This is about practicality, it's about I guess preparedness for weather or whatever. I think what you need to know is by wearing big clothes, you're not disguising anything. Your look is like there's camouflage, there's red, there's colour. All together, it's like an explosion in a knicker factory. <laughs> I don't know where to look. Come on, you. Let's get this done. Try those on, my love. But can our reluctant shopper embrace the notion of updating his attire? I don't really know what works for me or what looks good on me or how can I wear it. You know, I just kind of throw it all together and I'm hoping that this will help me to um, kind of step up a bit more and a bit more purpose behind my shopping. Yeah. The jeans are nice. I like yeah. the jeans. They feel comfortable and stretchy. I think that it's classic and we probably need to find a different jacket yeah. with that. Maybe that is a little bit too busy, I think. Mm. I think Mike needs confidence, and I think good clothes give you that. So I'm hoping that we can kind of marry the two and send him out here in a great outfit that's going to get him what he wants. It's all to do with proportionally breaking the body up into three. Yeah. So even though this is a fashionable size, this kind of shrunken blazer, mm. it isn't proportionally going to look great on you. Yeah, that's the outfit. With the style sorted, it's time for Mike's dishevelled mop to become a cool quaff. 
Looks like we have a really beautiful head of hair to work on here today. You need to open it all up a little bit so we can see your eyes. And I think today we'll concentrate on the beard. I think you're starting to look fantastic, man, really. <laughs> I am. It's, 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 look at that. Your eyes are going like this. Mike the Mummy's boy has finally become a man. You look like Brad Pitt's lazy younger brother. How do you feel in it all? I'm feeling, yeah, I'm feeling really confident. You know, it's, a, it's crazy. So, biggest news of the week so mm -hmm. far, you faced your mum. Yeah. How did that go? Really well. It was great. And I, I, you know, I love my mum to bits. Do you think she's ready to cut the cord. umbilical cord and yeah. let you go now? Because maybe she yeah. wants you at home partly because she might be on her own. Oh, yeah. I mean, for now, I think we're going to have really independent lives. I'm not relying on her for anything, and she's not relying on me for stuff, but she can, you know, she's going to always call me over for whatever. And, yeah. You know, I'm always going to be there. I'm always going to be her son. OK, so, so far, this week, you've learnt how to be around ladies, mm -hmm. how to hang out with the lads, yeah. how to face your inner demons, yeah. how to stop worrying, yeah. how to be confident, and, more importantly, how to dress. Yeah. But there's one more thing. What? The final piece to the puzzle. We're going to send you on a date with someone. Wow. <laughs> My first ever date. You're 30 years old. You're about to have your first date. Yeah. This is huge. And I'm so proud of you. You have come so far. Mm. You've done really well. And look at you. And now you're about to have a date. Oh, give us a hug. Mike has come so far in the last four days. When I first met him, he had no confidence. He couldn't really look me in the eye. He was frightened of everything. This man now has confidence. He's proud of himself. He's got self-esteem. It's incredible, the journey he's gone on. With Mike about to have his first date ever, he's heading into uncharted waters. But will this dinner for two be all smooth sailing? The menu tonight is a chicken and bacon pasta dish with a whopping side of anxiety. Mike's learnt this week that when he stays calm, he can achieve anything. But can he keep those nerves under control? I'm thinking quite... I'm just thinking logical. I'm just thinking... You know, the more I think about this date, the more I worry about it. So, yeah, let's not make a big deal of it. Let's try and keep it, just pet cool. Mike doesn't know it yet, but his companion for his first date ever is Sylvia, the Spanish senorita he found his rhythm with at the salsa class. When I met Mike, he seemed like a very nice person, very sensitive and just nice to be around. Oh, I'm very excited and nervous. <laughs> Hello. How are you? <laughs> Good. Hi. <How are you? laughs> you look amazing. Thank you. You do. Really nice. Welcome. Welcome to my pad. Come on then. Come on up. Sit down. Have some dips. Uh, would you like some wine? Oh. Should I take your bag or your coat? Sorry, I'm a hundred <laughs> questions. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I, <laughs> my nerves. Oh, let me pull out your chair. Here. He's off to a chivalrous start, but he's forgotten no Sylvia's coat. Say when. I don't want to get you too drunk. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Is uh, chicken OK? I'm doing, like, a chicken, sort of spaghetti, a little bit of bacon. I love all the things you said. Chicken, the bacon, the pasta. So, perfect. Fantastic. Perfect combination. Choice. Desperate to impress, Mike's concentrating on his not-so-complicated pasta dish and he leaves Sylvia in the dining room to nurse her wine, alone. If Mike's going to turn this date around, he needs to put into practice what he's learnt and start working on his charm offensive. I'm afraid, here we go. Oh. I know it's a big portion. I've <laughs> I'm afraid I'm not really used to giving food for ladies. I don't know how much you like to eat or not, I don't know. <laughs> 
to be honest, I never really had this kind of date. No? Wow. No, well, don't. it's the first time for me too. So, so there we are. That makes two of us. Yeah. With a dish made with love and the wine flowing, could Mike finally be getting the better of his nerves? I don't want to leave meeting anybody for ages and ages and ages. Mm. But I don't want to get desperate about it. I don't want to worry about it. Of course, it's nice to have someone to cuddle with and to kiss and do many things. I, I can't lie to you. I think he's a wonderful woman. And I have noticed that sometimes when I do things with my hands, she'll copy, which I think is a good sign, I, I, I've heard somewhere. So like we're, op we're imitating each other whereas we eat or drink or something like that, which is really positive. Our dating debutante has even moved pudding to the sofa. Just look at the Lothario go. Who talks when they're eating a good dessert? It's a great dessert. <laughs> I want to be eating it. Too busy, yeah. too, too busy, too eating busy it. enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I guess we'll keep in touch somehow. Oh, yeah. Um, well, yeah. Do you want to go on Facebook? Are you a Facebook I'm friend? I'm on Facebook, so okay. maybe you look me up. Well, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Your yeah. was lovely. Well, and nice to you again. Too. Yeah. Take care. And we'll be in touch. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe he could be a potential love interest. I'm not sure. <laughs> but he's definitely good company, and I enjoy myself today, so looking forward to next time, I guess. That was quite an amazing thing, I think, I've achieved just there. I'm 30 years old. It was my first date. Um, I think I did a good job, and I think she enjoyed herself. And I think that's it, isn't it? Eight weeks later, has Mike truly gone from indulged to independent? At the moment, I'm at home still, but I've been really proactive in looking, and I'm fairly confident that I'm going to find somewhere to move out to soon. Mike's walking taller, looking happier, and is finally taking control of his destiny. Since being in London, I've been a lot more confident. I've noticed more people uh, like in the supermarket, sort of noticing me, which is quite nice. He's even started asking women out. The date made me feel that going out on a date isn't so scary. I used to panic when I would get rejected, and now I've kind of realised that it's not necessarily about me. At the end of the day, it only takes that sort of one person to sort of say yes, and for things to work out, and then that's it. Job done.